Okay, hello. Uh, welcome back to Jarvis Johnson Gold, the premium channel that is free. Uh, it is it is free, but if you're watching this, you're premium. Today, <laughs> I'm annoyed. I uh, Shane Dawson is a, is a troubled character on YouTube. Specifically, one of the things that is like not even consequential about Shane Dawson is his conspiracy videos. There's something that I have watched in the past and they always annoy me because they're not real conspiracies and they don't have any basis in anything. It, it's just like Shane Dawson ooing and eyeing about freaking Chuck E. Cheese using used pizzas or whatever. They're not well-founded conspiracies. They just annoy me. And that is all I want to say before we start watching Shane Dawson's new Conspiracy Theories video, 2023. In fact, it's in the name. It's called Conspiracy Theories with Shane Dawson 2023. Like it's a fucking football game <laughs> that comes out every year. Without further ado, I don't think I really need to set this up much. I just want to get into it. Actually, scratch that. We're not getting into it yet. I need to complain about something else. The length of this video. In what universe do you think a 59 minute video about conspiracy? I I can't talk. I make long videos sometimes too, but I knew it was going to be long. He just like milks. Shane Dawson will milk a video for as long as a video can be. He'll milk a series for as long as a series can be. It's just milking. It's milking on milking. And you know how I feel about milk. I need to stop giving oxygen to that meme. Let's watch the video. Everything's a lie. <laughs> this is why I love conspiracies. I don't even know if these are conspiracies. I just love it. Uh, uh, <laughs> he already did it. They're not even conspiracies. How often does that happen in these videos? Often. Spoiler alert. It's often. Isn't it crazy? Nuts. This is like a jaw-dropping moment, for sure. It's crazy. <laughs> Are we gonna die? Okay, we should hold on to this jaw-dropping crazy moment because oftentimes in Shane Dawson videos, the jaw-dropping moment isn't particularly jaw-dropping. I don't really ride with the concept that everything is a lie, but I do think that we should be critical of institutions, critical of power structures, you know, stay woke and all that. When you get into everything being a conspiracy, you get down these weird rabbit holes that I presume we'll be seeing in this video. I would think that would be information you would want to share. Well, there, there, you, there's, that's a good point. Do you believe chose not to pay attention to certain... So I've watched a lot of... Um, <laughs> so I've watched a lot of Nick DiRamio videos about Shane Dawson. I feel like I'm like a little bit in eating his lunch right now. One of the things that Nick DiRamio has pointed out is that Shane Dawson will often do this thing where he shows you something interesting and then he cuts back to four hours earlier or a day earlier or three weeks before. Just show us the interesting thing. <laughs> we don't need the whole freaking context vlog portion. If I, if I, if I can assume what this video is going to be, it's going to be a bunch of inconsequential vlog footage interstitched between talking about these actual conspiracies. I, could totally be wrong. Advertising is based on one thing, happiness. Consumers are going to become more aware of the, the walls being pulled over their eyes. Frustrating that sounds. I, I mean, your role is to protect people, so protect people. Absolutely. Wow. The answer is simple. All right, so leave it to Shane Dawson to make something as normal as picking up an, <laughs> picking up an Amazon package to be conspiratorial. Oh, hey, Chris. Hi. <laughs> Don't worry, all will be revealed. Oh, hey, Chris, all will be revealed. <laughs> Again, just show us the package. I do understand storytelling, okay? I understand like building suspense and all that, but like, I'm a hater. What can I say? I'm a hater today. But before we get into more conspiracies, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is an app that helps you control what of your private information is shared on the public internet. The reason this information is accessible is because data brokers sell your information to telemarketers, spammers, scammers. Aura can identify these data brokers and then automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Particularly useful is it can even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. I've talked about Aura before and I've been using their app for a while now and I've been really impressed at the speed of which they can notify me about changes to my financial accounts and also information that's available of me on the internet. Aura also monitors your email and passwords to see if they've been exposed in a data breach and avail made available on the dark web. And in the unfortunate event that this is the case, they give you helpful recommendations on what to do next. Aura's app also features a VPN, a password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and it protects your devices from malware. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. 
click the link in the description to try Aura for a two week free trial and see what private information is being shared about you right now. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now back to the conspiracies. Chris, you are not ready for this. What is happening? <laughs> I feel like normally in advance you kind of tell me what's happening. You haven't told me anything and I'm extra scared today. <laughs> well, because this video is very dependent on if I got what I ordered. Is it very dependent on if you got what you ordered? Cause like, do you just start videos <laughs> when you're picking up packages and go, all right, Chris, come over. I might, something might have arrived of interest. <laughs> and then up, oh, not today, Chris, you can go home now. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. No way. Okay. Why? <laughs> God, sorry. It's just like so transparent. The like, it's building the mildest amount of intrigue. And then right when there's about to be a payoff, cutting to something completely unrelated. I'm nervous and insecure. How does it like, why are we getting ready right now? Just show us what's in the goddamn package. But that's, I mean, hey, it's the mystery box. JJ Abrams, you know, said it best. I mean, we've seen Shane Dawson videos before. We know that the payoff isn't going to be worth it. So I think that's... <laughs> We're just going to be disappointed. So if I'm wrong, I will call it like I see it. But if I'm disappointed, then all of this, or if we as a collective are disappointed, then all of this suspense building was for naught. I want to show you something. Okay. Okay. So Shane got a package. <laughs> we're, we're nearly three minutes in. All that's happened is that Shane got a package from Amazon and it's a really exciting package. In fact, it's gained the title card of The Catalyst. <laughs> How would you like a cookie? All right, I love cookies. <laughs> well, perfect, because I have some. I'm so scared. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> so these are so good. They're from Trader Joe's. Hey, y'all. Just got back from Trader Joe's and want to share with you some of our favorite snacks. You know Trader Joe's. I'm going to guess what this first conspiracy is going to be. Trader Joe's does a lot of like white labeling of products where they use some of the same factories that big companies use to mass produce their products. Like for example, Trader Joe's cookies are basically the same as Tate's cookies. They're made in the same place. It's really just like a Trader Joe's skin on top of it using all the same manufacturing equipment. Oh my God, here we go. Trader Joe's Organic Animal Crackers versus Stouffer's Original Animal Crackers. I knew, I, he's so predictable, dude. Oh, this isn't a conspiracy. It's just the business that Trader Joe's is in. Shane Dawson's merch is also manufactured at a place that probably makes other YouTuber merch. It's not a conspiracy if the blank for the shirt is similar to some other YouTuber's shirt. I love Trader I love everything from Trader I know, me too. Everything is like kind of healthy and kind of like, you know, exclusive and like, I don't know, I just love all of their products. Today's YouTube video is a Trader Joe's cookie haul. And we will be taste testing Trader Joe's cookies. Now, for my sweet tooth people. So I know this is probably so basic. These animal- So this is so funny because now that I know what he's about to do, I feel like the windup for this is I'm already disappointed. You know what I mean? Here, keep one. Okay. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> now he's gonna pull out the Stouffer's animal crackers and he's gonna say, now try these. How do these taste? Did you know they're the same? No. <laughs> Why am I so scared? What if I told you that those organic Trader Joe cookies are literally the exact same thing as do you think Shane Dawson's like cameraman has to have a lens that's really loud when you zoom in and out? Because I feel like you can get lenses that don't make this sound. What do you mean? But every single time I watch one of his videos, I'm constantly listening to this fucking I'm fully in hater mode, by the way. This is, some of this is not valid criticism. Disclaimer. Usually everything's all good faith criticism. This is a little bit, these, I've wanted to make a video about these types of videos for a long time, but he hadn't posted a new one and I just didn't want to like sort of talk about Shane Dawson because he wasn't really around. And so this, here's my time. Like they're almost the same or? No, they are the same. First product is the organic animal crackers. Now these look exactly like Stouffer's, like from your childhood. Basically what I explained 
earlier before he even went into the conspiracy because it was so predictable because it's not weird because it's the thing that happens in manufacturing surprise it's a little like ghost kitchens which eddie made a wonderful video about also we talked to him on sad boys check it out it may not be a good thing or it could be seen as misleading but because trader joe's is usually selling its generic products marked down in the generics in my view it's more like buying a generic than buying the name brand in that regard it's like whatever it's usually cheaper into the ghost kitchen point if ghost kitchens were like this is this is a generic ghost kitchen it would not be as insidious as trying to pretend you're uh, a unique brand so i don't think trader Joe's is doing anything shady here this is like a well-documented part of their business strategy i shit you not fucking Sorry, I need to calm down. Several minutes of this first conspiracy is just dedicated to other people's content of them reviewing the cookies that he's talking about. It doesn't add to anything. We've seen a few examples. It's fine to set the stage with a few examples. You are padding the content. <laughs> like, it's just, there's no other way to read this, in my opinion. No, <laughs> wait, what? You want a uh, donkey? So the rest of this conspiracy theory is just Shane's cameraman being flabbergasted that one product is the generic of another. And then like him going, whoa. <laughs> oh yeah, and then there's some more of this. <laughs> I'm so mad. What the fuck? The same as these circus ass looking fucking bag that you get at Walmart. The thing about this is that it's not new information. It's not hidden information. It's a well-known aspect of Trader Joe's brand that they generify or they Trader Joe'sify these well-known products. It's a way that they keep costs down. It's a part of their business. There's articles about it, tons of them. Fucked up on <laughs> such a deep level. Like, oh, it's literally, it should be illegal. This feels like a lawsuit. Cause I'm just like, how is that possible? How is that legal? I don't understand. Like you go to Trader Joe's, like these are all bougie exclusive items that are like slightly healthier. Trader Joe's is not bougie exclusive items. That there's your problem. <laughs> it's not fucking Whole Foods and whole, I mean, like it's meant to, it's all generic. Like it's a whole store where everything is the store's brand. You know when you go to Walmart and it's great value brand and it's cheaper, you know how you make a joke like Shane Dawson is the great value version of a real YouTuber? Sorry, that's me. You know how you make a joke like something is the great value version of something else? Like the great value version being the generic, like lower rent version of, I don't know, something mainstream? Trader Joe's is a grocery store full of just great value product you know what i mean except for it's trader joe's brand and they've done a great job of marketing it the fact maybe that shane thinks that Sh trader joe's is this exclusive club that only he has access to or whatever is a testament maybe to their marketing because it does feel nice to get trader joe's products trader joe's is a cool store i don't mind it right it's not illegal <laughs> i feel like his whole thing is just taking something normal and putting conspiracy music behind it and a bunch of other people's like b-roll uh, about their own experience with something and using that to turn it into something that it isn't like i don't think there's any problem with anything individually like it's okay to use people's you know content to support your argument you know fair use and all that but there's something just f that feels weird about everything in tandem and i can't exactly put my finger on it if i figure out a way to frame it, then I'll let you know. And they're expensive and they're bougie and they're like, oh, when I'm eating these, I'm like, oh my God, these are like the Tesla of pistachios. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually you can go to Trader Joe's and just get their basic ass, cheap ass, dry roast of pistachios. And they are exactly the same. Oh my. Okay. So he starts part two, which is called the rabbit hole. And it's supposed to be a new conspiracy. And he's still fucking talking about Trader Joe's. We're now nine minutes into the video. It's, it says pistachio theory. <laughs> it's still the same thing. So Walmart, for example, they're like the biggest leader of doing this. It's called private labeling. Others put most of their products under store brands like Walmart's Great Value. Oh, like Walmart's Great Value. It's like I pre-watched the video, uh, but I didn't. Oh, now we're into a section called Walmart Theory, where I feel like it's just the same thing again. I, yeah, I mean, it's a valid thing to bring up about like how businesses work, but it's not 
a conspiracy theory. I feel so scammed personally. <laughs> like, I really thought that they were like doing their own thing, paving their own way, and to find out it's all just not fake, but an illusion of some it's sort. It's all an illusion. Look, okay. <sighs> okay. So it feels weird. I don't need to defend these companies, but Trader Joe's, what they're trying to do, it's all in the curation of everything, right? Because they're they are choosing, they're the grocery store that gets to choose all of their partners for the white label, just like a normal grocery store. You know, some carry certain name brands and some some don't. And so there is something to that cohesion and curation. I don't feel scammed because I got off-brand trail mix. I don't know. Is it that serious? <laughs> I just went to the Wikipedia uh, for Trader Joe's. A couple of things to note, 570 locations in the United States. Do you wanna guess how many Walmart has? 10,580. So it has roughly 10,000 more stores. What is that, 20 times the number that Trader Joe's has? I don't know why that was relevant. I just, I don't know, this whole thing is so weird to me. Oh, oh the other thing that is if you, if you go to the Trader Joe's Wikipedia page, products, Private label is like the first thing you see under products. Fucking 13 minutes in, by the way, on this Trader Joe's theory. Can I talk about these chapters real quick? So four hours earlier, which was the animal crackers, the first conspiracy theory, which is about Trader Joe's animal crackers, fall down the rabbit hole, which is about private label products, AKA Trader Joe's animal crackers, pistachio theory, which is about Trader Joe's pistachios, and Walmart theory, which is about how Walmart does it too. And then Trader Joe's theory. There's like six chapters and they're all the same thing. This is 13 minutes of Trader Joe's theory, all right? I appreciate chapters for like navigating throughout a video, but when all the chapters help me do is navigate within the same part of the video, I'm a little annoyed. This is just like Shane not knowing how businesses work. Where everybody's like wearing, you know, uh, hula skirts and everybody's <laughs> organic and drinking green juice and they're all just like, oh, I love making pita chips. Bullshit. He, he just created a reality and then said bullshit to it. I'm gonna get you my favorite cup. Okay. So this cup was $29.99 at Starbucks. It's my favorite cup of all time. I've been using it for like two years. Okay. It's just gonna be about how this cup is licensed private label product of another company. And we're gonna spend another fucking 13 minutes looking at other products that are the same. So here's my- Oh, so it's not actually over. It's, he's now gonna go to another grocery store that engages in the very well understood practice of private labeling. They're not hiding it at all. Like when you go to the store, they have the fake cereal right next to the real one. Like look at the cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, they're not hiding it. It's generic brands. It's off brand. It's not hidden because it's not a conspiracy. I'm going insane. <laughs> no one was really hiding it. Obvi like there is, you know, hiding in, in non-disclosures and things like that. Uh, there is hiding in the inability to talk about it in specifics, but like this thing, they're literally next to each other. They're next to each other at all stores. You find the generics where you find the name brand. That's just how it works. It's just that Trader Joe's is all generics. Oops, all generics. That's the whole idea for the store. Yeah. Is this stupid? Is this only crazy to me? Yes. Also, the other thing is like, look how unappealing the Aldi generic brand looks compared to Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I, I look at the Cinnamon Toast Crunch and I just follow hook, line, and sinker for all the marketing and stuff. I go, ooh, yummy. Look at how bright and vibrant the colors are. That looks like the box from my childhood. And I look at the Aldi's and I'm like, that looks disheveled. It looks yellowed out. It looks bad because the, you know, one company has, you know, tons of marketing and A-B testing and, and focus groups. And the other one is just slapping something together to put on the store shelves. I'm sure they have some smaller version of it, but they're not operating at such a large scale that they can invest those sort of resources. If anything, it's more transparent to have the two products side by side because you're allowing the customer to have the illusion of choice. They can choose the cheaper option if, you know, like that's something that they wanna do. And the fact that they are literally the same is not always gonna be true, you know what I mean? Maybe this conspiracy is just one that I happened to know about, so let's look at the other conspiracies in this video. I really want Taco Bell, but that has nothing to do with conspiracies. Wait a second, so like, this feels a little bit too transparent. It's like, I want 
to work in Taco Bell somehow, but I have no content. So let's lie. Uh, Mountain, or uh, Diet Mountain Dew Zero Blast. Can I get a soft taco supreme? Okay, so I'm beginning to think that there's no theory here, and this is just unrelated vlog footage that I mentioned that they just work into videos to pad the link. Or I guess to, you know, build rapport with Shane and co i that's fine that's okay it's okay to have vlog footage the reason that this part bothers me is because the video is an hour long <laughs> and the last 15 minute section could have been five minutes and so when the video feels like it's full of as much empty space and in non-essential ingredients the fact that this stuff is left in becomes annoying instead of cute while i don't agree with how padded it made the video feel and how non-essential it was he did credit all of the videos from the creators. It's in the description. It's in the description. That's what I'll say. <laughs> toaster tarts is really funny. <laughs> I don't know why toaster tarts sounds like, sounds funny to me, but it does sound funny. Toaster tarts. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, <laughs> it's, uh, it's this, they're just being, it's the same thing over and over again. We're, it, it's, it's now been one conspiracy for the half of the video, dude. The Frosted Flakes. Whoa. Wait, Frosted Flakes, isn't that the name? <laughs> Did they just steal the, the actual Wait. name? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's because the, the term Frosted Flakes is descriptive. It's not like a trademarkable, uh, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes on the other hand is a trademarkable thing. And I do love that on the box it does say of corn <laughs> right here. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes of corn. Has anyone ever noticed that before? There's my conspiracy. It's a Mandela effect. Has it always said Kellogg's Frosted Flakes of corn? Let me know in the comments down below. I feel like I'm in a movie where I'm like in an alternate universe where everything's off. Yes. Like it's like a multiverse. Leave it to Shane Dawson to compare the existence of generic food brands to the multiverse. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, so I don't know how much of this you're going to end up seeing because I'm halfway through the video and it's been the same conspiracy with different examples for 30 minutes. I think you will get bored if you watch me having the same reaction over and over. And I'm not even faking it. I just can't believe it. it's continued to go. So um, if at any point... We jump to the next thing, that's why. If this video is 60 minutes of Shane Dawson comparing generic products to their name brand counterpart, I will, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do, but I don't wanna think about it. We're 33 minutes in, I got some applesauce. I walked away from the video, assuming that nothing new would happen, and I was right. Anyway, we're going to the last location of the video, grocery store conspiracy theories. Okay, so I do worry that it's gonna be the same. <laughs> I do worry that there's one conspiracy theory this whole video, and he stretched it out <laughs> for an hour, but, I'm gonna watch it and I'll let you know what happened. Now, I've talked about this before in videos, like all the crazy things they do, like they put the eggs in the very back of the store, so you have to go all the way through the store to find it, buy other things. Okay, so now he's talking about sort of the psychology of grocery stores and how they move, put things into weird places to like, you have to walk all the way to the back of the store to get the milk and they put kids stuff where the kids can see it. That's real, that's a real thing. Wouldn't call it a conspiracy. Uh, would also rather watch, I don't know, Matt Pat's food theory video about this exact same concept, but there's other videos about it that are not an hour long. I just wanna call out the fact that this, Shane uses the word scary so much because it's like a it's a emotional word i guess but the things aren't scary and the reactions are just so overdone like for example when rylan says that he often doesn't have service in grocery stores it's a recurring theme for me not to have service in grocery stores so maybe that's a grand conspiracy to keep people off of their phones so they can shop more is what i'm assuming this is shane's reaction Every time I like go, like I was Wait. trying to catch you. It's just not that crazy, you know what I mean? I don't know, I feel like I'm going too hard now, but this is just too much. Uh, maybe this just isn't for me. <sighs> Nothing. Yeah, no service. It's almost as if when you were outside of the giant building, there was nothing obstructing your path to the cell phone tower. But as soon as the signal had to permeate 
the inside of the structure, there was an issue. Maybe it has to do with it being a big building. I don't know. Maybe it's a conspiracy. I don't know. I got some crackers. Sorry, I just I just figured I'd eat. There's not because there's not gonna be many things for me to comment on. So he goes to a place called the Grand Vista Hotel, and he shows us that while also captioning it the unknown, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> whoa, whoa, it smells really weird. Is it just me? Oh, I feel like I'm gonna pass like I'm gonna pass out <laughs> from like. So as it turns out, the Great Unknown is actually a one-star hotel in Simi Valley. Shane, Rylan, and Chris? Can't remember his name? I don't know. Go to it, and the question is like, is it haunted? What's its deal? They keep showing one-star Yelp reviews <laughs> where everything's blurred out except for weird smell <laughs> or do not come, you will regret it. Okay, so just to make things interesting, I'm gonna have us order from three different restaurants. So this place is called Chicken Sammy's. <laughs> no shot, is he about to uncover ghost kitchens? You gotta be fucking kidding me. So pick anything you want. Well, if they're called Chicken Sammy's, I feel like I should just get their classic crispy chicken sandwich, right? I swear to God, if they order from a bunch of different restaurants and arrive it and then the food's all the same, like in Eddie's video, Eddie Burback, my friend, who did the video about ghost kitchens. If that happens, Shane Dawson, I, uh, ooh. New place called Fresh Set. Let's look at a grilled chicken sandwich. What, I'm just grabbing our meals. So then it's time to grab the dinner, and I swear to God, if this is a ghost kitchen's conspiracy. Uh. All of the food looks exactly the same. Are these the same? This oh. is so fucked up. So the new thing that's happening right now, a restaurant chain like Red Robin. They'll go on the Postmates app and they'll create fake restaurants that look like local little cute hangouts. And that so that you'll see it on Postmates and be like, oh, I haven't tried chicken sammies. Let me try that. This is valid, by the way. That's why Eddie's video did so well, because it is like a dishonest business practice. But it's just funny that w the first thing was something that we've a lot of us already know. And the second thing is uh, just coincidentally the topic of Eddie's video. Not that it's it could be parallel thinking. It's in the zeitgeist. They're all the same. What? When you look on Postmates, all the addresses for Fresh Set, Red Robin, and Chicken Sammies are all the same. Anyway, here's my opportunity to say, if you want to learn more about ghost kitchens, watch Eddie Burbeck's video. And if you've watched Eddie Burbeck's video, go ahead and check him out on Sad Boy's podcast. I'll leave the link. I'll leave the link. You'll learn a lot about ghost kitchens. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. It's a Shane Dawson video. I don't know what I expected. I got, I got exactly what I expected. Uh, stay gold, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>